Tyler Grant here with Dynamic Training Strategies. Welcome to the Training Evolution. How should you carry your defensive firearm for personal defense? Chambered or unchambered? Here lately I've been getting a lot of conversation about people of safety and having the round chamber or not. These, these tend to get a little heated because of there's so much emotion behind it. I got in a conversation with a former special operations guy out here the other day and I kept on asking him why is it unsafe. I got multiple answers of, well that's the way I've always done it. Well everyone I, everyone I always talked to said it's unsafe. And I kept on asking him why because that wasn't a reason. He told me because of a negative discharge and that's all he could really talk about. I go, okay, if that's the problem, let's take that time to train to rack around to keep our finger off the trigger when we're presenting the firearm towards a threat. That mitigates that problem. And if you're worried about negligent discharge that much, you probably don't need to be carrying a firearm for personal defense because no matter what you do, that risk is there. Now the other side is, I have kids all the, around me all the time. I don't want my kids picking up my gun and shooting it. If that's the problem, you're where you're storing that firearm isn't probably the most secure place. So again, that is on you to, be, to lock that firearm up so there is no unauthorized access. And again, for personal defense, carrying on our body, that's not the issue. That's not what I'm talking about. And I hear multiple answers all the times of, well, I don't want that firearm just to go off for absolutely no reason. My comment or rebuttal to that is having the proper equipment or having the trigger guard area protected with plastic or leather or whatever carry style system that you use to protect it so your finger can't go inside the trigger when you're presenting that firearm. And I really don't hear too much after that because of it generally it's unsafe. The reason why they feel that it's unsafe because the way they have been trained is they don't, they don't want to have the liability of being prior law enforcement, prior military, or whatever the case is, of having one extra step to ensure safety. People want to replace training and practice with mechanical device, a mechanical device or an extra procedure or step to ensure safety. And no matter what you do, you're going to either shoot the gun when you want to shoot it or you're going to shoot the gun when you don't want to shoot it, regardless of who you are. So if you're no, if so by knowing this, take that extra time, energy, and effort by simply keeping your finger somewhere else other than the trigger until you're ready to shoot. It is that simple. And again, it takes time. Now let me go out down at the range and show you the differences just in a pure administrative situation from chambered and unchambered. One point nine two. One point eight six. One point seven three. Now, I'm going to rack the slide every time a round's going to come out to simulate that I am doing empty chamber. Two point seven seven. Two point seven five. Let's re scratch that one because I forgot because I train I always train chambered, okay? Two point six one. Two point six one. Two 
2.55. We just got off the range. Now let's look at the numbers. Again, let's not get our head wrapped around the actual numbers of adding, subtracting, and averaging the times out. Too many people focus on that. The concept is empty chamber will and does take more time to, to shoot that round because of the additional step it takes of manipulation of the gun to chamber that round. And if we look at big picture wise, 86% of gunfights happen between 6 and 12 feet. That's relatively close. The average, the average time of the length of that gunfight is 3 seconds. So if we know that and we carry empty chamber, this is what we're dealing with. An average time for me, 2.64. Again, that doesn't matter. Average time of chamber, 1.84. That is irrelevant to me. It's, it takes more time. Let's not train that way. We can train and practice in a way that is safe by simply keeping our fingers somewhere else other than the trigger for that worst case scenario. And here's the thing you have to understand too. The, that shot timer doesn't start when you recognize that shot timer that shot timer starts when the bad guy needs to be shot okay so again keep it keep it chamber